Good afternoon again. Thank you for being here this afternoon with us to share coding. It. it is a great pleasure for all of us who are part of this non-profit international course of neuropathic diabetes food, CODINF 23, to be able to meet all of you again. Once again, we are driving by the enthusiasm of being able to exchange knowledge and experiences in the health field in different countries of the world in order to offer diabetes patients the benefit of uh, up-to-date and adequate care. Uh, that's opening this new edition of CODINF 2023, and uh, thanking the support of the institution, uh, Neurodiab, IDF, ALAD, IWGDF, Medicine Faculty of Barcelona, Andin, and especially the worldwide company and uh, climate companies for all the efforts to make uh, this international course a reality. In this way, the course Cardinef remains uh, a start. Mm. We make a little change in the program because we have uh, difficulties to uh, connection with uh, Professor Hermelinda Pedrosa from Brazil. And by this reason, uh, I will start with my first presentations is the new insights of diabetes polyneuropathy uh, physiology. Uh, oh. Diabetes mellitus is a worldwide endocrine and metabolic disorder with insulin sensitivity or deficiency or both whose prevalence could rise up to 592 million so in about 2035. Consistent hyperglycemia leads to one of the most common comorbidity like diabetes peripheral neuropathy. DPN is underlying with unpleasant sensory experience such as tingling uh, and burning uh, sensation, hyperesthesia, numbness, etc. Uh, globally, 60% of the diabetes population is suffering from such symptoms as microvascular complications. Consistent hyperglycemia during diabetes causes activation, innovation, uh, various pathways playing an important role on the homeostasis of neuron and other cells. And by this reason, the eruption of these pathways results into apoptosis and mitochondrial dysfunction causing neuropathy. Among these, uh, pathways like polio and PRP are some of the most intensively studied one we rest to like WNT pathway methogen activated protein kinase, MAPK, and MTRA pathway are comparatively newly discoveries. And this is very, very new for these last two years. Understanding of these pathways of the role in pathophysiology of diabetic neuropathy underlines a few molecules of immense therapeutic values will be a start to uh, make treatment in this kind of patients. Uh, the inhibitors or activators of these molecules can be of therapeutic importance in the management of diabetic polyneuropathy. This review hence focuses on this underlying molecular mechanism intended to provide therapeutically effective uh, molecular target for the treatment of DPNs. First of all, fully um, fully melanated fibers, E beta and E alpha, are responsible for vibratory perception threshold and position sense in the space. They are much larger than the small fibers and myelin from swan cells forms a protective cover to different toxic substances and accelerate the axonal nerve conduction of neurotransmitters. The uh, small uh, amyelinated neurons, the C fibers, or smaller fibers without uh, uh, myelin, it's only with uh, Schwann cells, are part of the sensory neurons, suffer earlier damage 
than the large fibers. The neurons and the receptors have the nociceptive function of head pain. Other special small fibers in conjunction with small C fibers are thinly myelinity uh, delta fibers, which are responsible for touch, pressure, and cold. Uh, here you can see in this slide the uh, brief of what happened in the cell damage and what about the mechanism of cell damage. It's interesting to remark a face with hyperglycemia endothelial cells not being able to metabolize this increase in glucose and cause an increase in the activity of the four metabolic pathways that use glucose as a substrate with the consequent increase in the flow of the glucose pathway, polyols, that generate on an elevation of sorbitol and cellular fructose. This metabolites, together with the reduction of myonicetol inside of the cell, facilitate an increase in the intracellular osmotic state. Likewise, the increase in aldose reductase uh, enzyme decreases the antioxidant glutathione and altering the redox uh, balance. Here you can see the polyol pathways. In brief uh, physiology of this polyol pathway, is, uh, the most important is low down aldose reductase, uh, mm, NADPH, nitric oxide, and GSH glutathione uh, produce elevation of ROS, reactive oxidative space. And these promote oxidation, inflammation, and acceleration the metabolism of uh, acyl carnitines. And these produce a neuropathic pain. One of them being the formation of important antioxidants like nitro, nit nitric oxidase and glutathione, whose reduction causes inflammation through excess ROS formation. In, in the next slide, uh, you can see the uh, DN, DNA lesions that occur in DPN. How did they occur? Well, PRP pathway leading to um, DPN. Hyperglycemia causes saturation of several pathways and leads to increase in ROS production and accumulation intracellular and inside of the um, uh, several um, organelles in intracells, for instance, in the endoplasmic reticular or lysosomes, etc. This causes DNA damage and ends PRP activation. This excess of activation causes activation of inflammatory mediators and this uh, causing pain with depletion of an NAD, the store of NAD. And this is the result of this uh, pathway of PRP. In the next one slide are the molecular of JAK uh, start pathway causing DPM. Uh, this pathway, this pathway uh, produce uh, the, uh, is, pr is producing by a uh, hyperglycemia and the uh, situation of the uh, jack and uh, sad um, mechanism stimulate the uh, cytokines, interleukines, interferons and lead to activation of jack uh, following to a stat together forming a complex uh, jack stat for the inflammatory cascade inside of the cell. Along with this direct activation of inflammatory mediators like prostaglandins, a specific jack start molecules, also cause oxidative stress inside of the neuron, with the corresponding damage of peripheral nerves and hence causes progression of VPN. Now, one of the last uh, important uh, aspects of the uh, pathophysiology of the DPN is the canonical or non-canonical pathway. Pathways like polyol, which focus on molecules like aldose reductase, sorbitols, NADPH, have been intensively studied and they role in the cascade 
of DPN is widely accepted, whereas pathways of uh, JAK-STAT, WNT, PRP, and MTO4 have been found to play a dual role in AD, acting as a protective mechanism against DPN or accelerating the, the progression of painful symptoms in this kind of patients. And now you can see the role of MAPQ, uh, um, that pathway in DPN, this cascade starts with MAP3K activating 2K, which further activates the, again, the MAPK. The concentration of this molecule is increased in view of hyper hyperglycemia induced neural factor uh, inside of the receptors of this cell. And this further elevates the P38 concentration, again, increasing inflammatory mediators like TNF and interleukin-1, causing DPN. Hence, the MAP activation overall causes progression of DPN. And now we can see um, very quickly what about the mTOR pathway in progression of DPN. This pathway increases the neuropathic pain through many ways. Hyperglycemia causes inhibition of mTOR, which leads to upregulation of apoptotic proteins, DCL2 and BAX, which damage the nerves and cellular damage bioapoptosis. In this pathway, enhanced nociception process enhance causes neuropathic pain. This clearly states the role of mTOR and BDNF molecules in causing DPN, and this results in hyperalgesia and hence DPN. Well, now you can see what are the results of these uh, recently uh, studies about the new molecules um, what, that have compromised in the uh, physiopathology of the DPN. Here you can see the uh, pathway, the poor target and the potential target of the uh, treatment of this kind of inflammatory situation of stress and of the polio pathway and uh, deficiency of myo inositol. And here in the right of your screen, you can see all of the potential targets that are now with an ongoing in phase one and two to remove the new uh, therapeutic treatments of DPN. Well, what's about the new clinical players? Because that are the molecules and basic uh, players in the DPN pathophysiology. What's about in the clinical players? The metabolic syndrome has emerged as a crucial risk factor for neuropathy. The data for multiple clinical studies in United States, Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, India, China, longitudinal and cross-sectional have shown this association. The EMS, uh, hyperglycemia, obesity, and dyslipidemia, and the risk of developing neuropathy increase with the number of these components are present in, in an individual, in the patient. Prediabetes is also an important factor for small fiber neuropathy. And also, obesity has also emerged as an independent cause of neuropathy associated or not to diabetes. This is very, very important. This is new. Here you can see the increased prevalence of prediabetes and its association with EPM present. Look at this, the uh, first uh, study that you can see the high uh, level of diagnosis of uh, symptoms and uh, neuropathic diabetes 
in patients who have a pre-diabetes, 11.2. And in the last study about the uh, obesity patients with pre-diabetes, uh, we have 29%. This is very high because if you compare in this very large study, DM had 34%. Uh, the score of symptoms uh, of symptoms on uh, physical examination with a Michigan score and the consensus Toronto uh, present diabetic polyneuropathy in pre-diabetes is about 11, 13, 49, and 29 percent in the different studies. In non-diabetes, it's 3.5, 7.4, 29, and 11. But it's a very huge difference, but the difference is in relationship with the methodology that the studies use. In the next slide, we can see what about the pre-diabetes and type, type 2 and the metabolic healthy situation. In the metabolic healthy individuals, mitochondria produce in the neuron cell body, traffic down the axons, providing energy for normal axon function. And in high diabetes and type 2, the chain of endurance events lead to mitochondrial dysfunction. This is the case stone. With adenosine trifosphate loss and distal to proximal degeneration of energy stereoid axons. And this is very new in the clinical <clears throat> studies that the oxyphingol lipids have a very important role as a toxic action on nerves and pancreatic beta cells. Biosynthesis of sphingolipids, enzymatic condensation of palmitol coenzyme A, as with the amino acid serine by serine palmitol transferase, are a typical sphingolips. These uh, typical sphingolips are named deoxyphingolips. These are very important to produce a toxic situation inside of the uh, nerve. Well, this is a review about uh, the most new aspects of the heart physiology in the DPN. And uh, I'm, I'm open at the end to, to receive your um, uh, questions. And uh, now we will be able to start the uh, third uh, presentation about the clinical uh, study. So this is a clinical practice, neurological evaluation, quantitative sensory testing, and it's diagnosis of neuropathy. Uh, if uh, we have opportunity to introduce to uh, Dr. Uh, Relinda Pedrosa from Asil, we uh, make it after my second presentation. Uh, it's interesting to uh, mention that last year, finding ourselves in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemics and diabetes, with its neuropathic complications, the Nobel Prize was awarded for the transcendental discovery of how the mechanism are made so that the physical can be transformed into a skin receptors and the corresponding sensory nerve fibers in a bio biochemical, the biophysical to biochemical response. And uh, with, uh, this, with uh, this new uh, situation, we will be able to make a change about our possibility of diagnosis, of early diagnosis in this kind of patients. Uh, look at this one. The signs and symptoms to establish the diagnosis of polyneuropathy are very new of all of the attending people. Burning, stomach pain, uh, cramping, numbness, allodynia, hyperesthesia, and the signs decrease or abolition, uh, the threshold of sensitivity, distal in a symmetrical fashion, tendon reflex, distal or uh, symmetrical shape, muscular strength, distal or 
and symmetric and alteration of electrophysiology studies. These are the, the most important. But today, the portable uh, QST with software for clinical application is a, an interesting tool because these discoveries have accompanied uh, to this day, allowing us to understand various aspects of the behavior of sensory nerve fibers, and thus opening a new path to be able to interpret the different phenotypes of the alterations that occur when we evaluate by quantifying the functional state of the responses to the nervous stimulus that we carry out with a quantitative sensory testing. Or we can use in the different polyneuropathies. When I talk about different polyneuropathies, I'm talking about the phenotypings that we talk in the next slides. Whether it is thermal, mechanical, mixed pain, and the type thermal JSIC. And here you can see the, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, here you can see the results of the study. One, this is for one leg, and in this case, it's the front leg, the right leg, uh, demonstrate uh, no alterations in all of the fibers, in vibration, in the <coughs> beta cell, neuron, with, uh, a fiber with a large nerve fiber. The second is about the whole test result, is a um, delta fiber, small fiber. The next one is uh, the worm, is also a delta fiber, but include C fibers. And then the last one is the methodology different that you can see the triangle. That's just a limit test for detect alterations predominantly in the C fibers. Uh, well, we can see the diagnosis methods classic for the neuropathic are the one or to make the neuropathic impairment score the lower limb, seven nerves examined by electromyography, but this is very, very difficult to do it in our uh, daily activity in the uh, consult, in the office or in the hospital. The neuropathic diabetic uh, start in usually in the distal uh, nerve fibers, but in a small and medium caliber, and uh, we need to check this kind of nerve fibers to make the first diagnosis. As the consensus um, uh, suggests to us in Toronto for NeuroDiab or the American Neurological Association. And this kind of consensus have a saying that the rest of demonstrate the alteration of QST, quantitative sensory testing, as we show recently, in two or more nerve fibers. It's different. This is not important if the fiber is um, uh, to the cold, to the warm, to the uh, pain. If we have two fibers, we have a probable diagnosis, and we can start the treatment of the patient. If we have one, only one, it is possible. It is not probable. And we uh, have not uh, suggest to um, start the uh, treatment. This is not in the consensus of level E. In the next one, we can see what ab about the gold standard in relationship with the QSD. Well, it says there are um, several studies, uh, clinical studies, but uh, make the uh, relation about the versus gold standard of, uh, for instance, uh, the CCM, the uh, confocal corneal microscopy, or electromyography, or punch biopsy, and the uh, sensitivity of uh, the method of quantitative sensory testing is about 85 to 87%. It's very high to make the screening test and is lower the specificity as uh, is normal because uh, specificity is to do it the uh, confirmed diagnosis. We can do it with 
a punch biopsy or with electromyography. Uh, here you can see one of the interesting studies that uh, it was done in, uh, in Germany by a Rosenberger group in, um, uh, in the University of Heidelberg. Allowing quantitative detection of the functional states of these sensory fibers has made it easier to recognize the different phenotype of neuropathies in order to recommend a different treatment that is more in line with the pharmacological needs of each of the phenotypes of polyneuropathy detected. Because burning or not burning, head and paresthesia correspond to peripheral and central nervous system sensitization. Burning or burning head and mechanical alalina without alterations of the temperature threshold correspond to prevent skin nociceptor with sensitization of the central nervous system. And it is uh, a window open to make a uh, um, personalized treatment that the uh, results are better than if we make in every people the same uh, drugs to know what about the results. For instance, duloxetine or uh, emitriptyline or uh, gabapentin or brigabaline. So in this case, we are using exactly the drug that is uh, necessary to the patient in relation to the lesion that demonstrated by the phenotype. Here you can see the German network pain. Uh, definitely uh, the German uh, network pain, uh, study demonstrated uh, during uh, the last uh, three years that QS3 protocol does not directly differentiate between central nervous system or peripheral nervous system, but may be used as a supplementary diagnosis to sensorize phenotypes. It's a, a help for us to recommend what kind of drug it is necessary to start with this patient. That the combination of QST together with another functional or structural measure of neuropathy, such as, such as uh, MCS or a punch biopsy or confocal corneal microscopy, is suggested. QST may be useful to identify patients who uh, may have small fiber deficit, especially asymptomatic patients with normal NCS. Uh, in the next slide, we have uh, one more, the recommendation of the consensus. Uh, this recommendation established the clinical diagnosis of the study of Neurolab that we work very hard in Latin America. Uh, remember, it is necessary two positive tests. So, so we can use monofilament uh, vibratory sens sensation or be peak or temperature with some two. Yes, of course, if we have only this one, we can do it. But remember, we arrived uh, with uh, a stool, these tools, uh, very um, primary, and we cannot quantify we cannot make a, a real evolution about this situation of the nerves. And finally, we arrive later if we use the monofilament that checking only, and vibratory checking only the large nerve fibers or medium nerve fibers. This will allow a primary intervention to treatment and to assess the clinical evolution. As a recommendation is early in a cure diagnosis, make a strong treatment. There are a correlation between nerve damage and symptoms, so a nerve biopsies with DPM presenting symptoms, whereas patients with new onset pain, burning, or pickling, show an early degeneration or loose of C fibers and subsequently initial demyelination or remyelination of large fibers. Patients present numbness and loose of probation or proprioception from feet and move upward over time is DPM progress. Distal to proximal axon loose symptoms and are the hallmarks of DPMs. Be careful if the, <coughs> if the progress is very quickly, 
uh, it is possible you are in front of a polyneuropathy, but not for diabetes, for other uh, disease. The next one is to recommend, okay, diabetic neuropathy. It's necessary to make an early and accurate diagnosis, and we prefer to do it in the quantitative test, make a strong treatment in this case, if we have a phenotype of this kind of neuropathy. Thank you for your attention for this presentation.